The time has come for the Lickitung PvP IV Deep Dive. Lickitung is one of the more annoying Pokemon to build for Great League PvP because it doesn't really spawn in the wild that much, and you can't hatch it from eggs, and it's not really in raids all that often or like ever nowadays. So getting XL candy for Lickitung is a lot tougher than it is for like Azumarill or Sableye, for instance. And then on top of that, you're gonna have to take this thing to basically level 50, where, you know, Azumarill and Sableye, you can kind of cut off like halfway. So Lickitung is one of the more resource intensive Pokemon to build for Great League PvP. So when it comes time to build one, you're probably gonna wanna make sure that you're building the right Lickitung. And in this video, I highlight what the uh, best stats and IVs are for Lickitung in Great League PvP. And I'll also kind of cover uh, what stats are good enough if you've already built a Lickitung and you're questioning if you're gonna have to build a second one, I do have some like, I do discuss that topic there. So yeah. Also, you may notice I'm wearing my Tap 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 shirt. I've actually updated my merch store with Tap 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 merchandise so you can let people know what you're doing with your free time. I mean, hey, it could be a good conversation starter. You're hanging out in the bar and some sexy young something is looking at you going, why does your shirt say Tap Tap Tap? You can just turn to them and go, well, hey, I play Pokemon Go competitively. Yeah. Boom. Instant date. They're coming right home with you if you're into that, right? And if you're not too into the tap stuff, I even have the OG uh, Worm Believe shirts. And then you can get official Swag Tips apparel as well. It's been about two, three years since I've updated my merchandise and uh, tap, 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 right? Um, but yeah, so as far as the deep dive goes, I'm going to be talking about the Pokemon's true stats, and I'm going to be relating them to these PvP IV tables. If you're not too familiar with the true stats of Pokemon or how breakpoints or PvP IVs work, I highly recommend checking out my PvP IVs simplified video, link up above and in the description, uh, you know, to get your feet wet before you go diving off into the deep end here. And then to add to this, I am going to be going through a lot of numbers in this video, and uh, everything in this video can be found in a text-based format in my article, the the Lickitung PvP IV Deep Dive on GamePress, also linked in the description, so you can get all this information in a text-based format. And without further ado, let's get in to Lickitung. So starting out with the basics here, Lickitung is a very bulk-focused Pokemon, and unlike most Pokemon that I do these PvP IV Deep Dives on, uh, Lickitung doesn't have much like low-hanging fruit as far as an attack breakpoint is concerned. So when it comes to Lickitung, it's kind of all about the bulk. And I think Lickitung is pretty forgiving when it comes to the bulk department because its like goal defense stat is about 125.94 to 126.58, and you can go over over on that defense that's perfectly a-okay um, but you know just sticking at the 125.94 is okay too and then for the HP check I feel like at a minimum you're gonna want to have 183 HP and Lickitung can easily get more HP than that as well so there ends up being a pretty like wide range of like good Lickitungs when it comes to Great League PvP. Uh, to add to that, having more HP, having more defense can always help you out, definitely a good thing. And there are some attack breakpoints to consider as well. It's just getting those attack breakpoints and meeting the bulk checks can be a little bit difficult. So to talk about the stats individually here, starting out with the defense, uh, what's going on with that range? 125.94 to 126.58. Well, that's based on Azumarill's attack stat, getting an Azumarill breakpoint. So you can get the 0-1 and the 1-2 shield disadvantage scenario wins a lot more consistently against Azumarill. In my Azumarill PvP IV deep dive, I talk about how Azumarill wants to work on a bit of an attack weight to try to mess with Lickitung. Well, in the Lickitung PvP IV deep dive, Lickitung wants to get a defense stat so it can avoid the breakpoint from Azumarill. Uh, what Lickitung has in, the, in its advantage here is that Azumarill can only get so much attack before it starts bleeding bulk, as discussed in the Azumarill PvP IV Deep Dive, where Lickitung can load up as much bulk as it wants to without really hurting itself in any of its matchups, so Lickitung has an easier time. When it comes to the low end of this, the 125.94, that isn't based off the rank 1 Azumarill. 125.1 uh, would be based off the rank 1 Azumarill. Uh, this is actually kind of like the mid-range of attack weights of like really high stat product 
like good IV Azumarils. In fact, this is also the attack weight of the rank 2 Azumarils. So if you have a 125.94 defense stat, like 16 out of the top 23 Azumarill will be covered. If you push this up a little bit higher to 126.2, then you'll cover 22 of the top 23 uh, stat product Azumarill. And then going even further beyond to 126.58, we'll cover all 23 of the 23 top Azumarill. And then when it comes to the majority of the recommended Azumarill from the PvP IV Deep Dive with an attack weight, uh, that's basically all but I think like two attack tiers. And when it comes to those two higher attack tiers, one is completely unrealistic. Like there's only one IV spread that can hit it and not have bad bulk. And then same thing with like the tier below it. It's it's so like unlikely that those Azumarills are going to matter that I wouldn't worry about it too much. But of course, having more defense is never really a bad thing. Now, while it sounds like the defense is completely focused on Azumarill, Azumarill is kind of like the peak of the iceberg, if you will, uh, when it comes to defense breakpoints. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other defense breakpoints that come immediately after, like the 125.1. So it's like you're able to meet all those other matchups and then also cover Azumarill and I mean being able to beat Azumarill a lot more efficiency is that a bad thing to do in the Great League meta is more defense a bad thing right so yeah then when it comes to the 183 HP uh, HP in general in the PvP IV deep dives for a lot of species can be kind of difficult to recommend and it's even harder for Lickitung because Lickitung is like this goofy neutral matchup safe swap kind of Pokemon so it's like how much damage do you take before your opponent, you know, swaps out into the Pokemon? How much energy do you gain before they swap out into a counter Pokemon? You know, like all that plays into the matchups. So working through as many relevant matchups I can, playing out different kind of, you know, realistic scenarios with the numbers there, I found 183 to be the most consistent without losing hair over it. Uh, 184 can be a little bit more consistent, especially against uh, a play rough Ice Beam Azumarill, which if you have the 184, you can more consistently handle the 1-2 shield scenario, pure body slam, no power whip needed. Uh, so that's some pretty useful tech to be aware of if your body slam bait doesn't work out, right? Um, but 183 seems to be consistent for most things that I observed. Now, when it comes to higher levels of defense and HP, it can be kind of hard to determine, you know, what's more useful, having more defense or having more HP. In general, having a bit more defense works better for a Pokemon like Lickitung because Lickitung is this neutral tanky Pokemon that's going to be taking multiple charge moves, presumably. And uh, if you have enough of a defense weight, you could reduce your opponent's charge move damage by one damage. And uh, if you think about it, if you take three charge moves and you decrease that damage from the charge moves by one each that's going to be more valuable than having two more hp right because you're reducing three damage but of course not all matchups play out that way and not all charge move breakpoints behave so nicely for us so a little bit of a priority list that i have for going for higher than the recommended defense in hp is uh 126.2 defense i feel is about equivalent to having 184 hp so they're on equal level footing in my opinion and then uh, after that, at a lower priority, would be having greater than the 184 HP or having the 126.58 or higher defense. And then when it comes to the 185 and the 126.58 defense and higher HP, I'd say they're kind of on equal footing too. Like once you clear 126.2, you know, defense, I don't feel like you got a lot to worry about. Uh, same with 184 HP. I don't feel like Lickitung has a whole lot to worry about after that point. And here we have the 85 different IV spreads that meet the 125.94 defense and 183 HP stat. Uh, this table will be linked in the article on GamePress, which is linked in the description, of course, so you can ogle it there yourself. And the table is customizable too. So if you're like, hey man, I find that 160, that 126.2 defense is more important than you're thinking, Mr. Swag, well, then you can update the table uh, to reflect only splits that have higher than 126.2 defense. And maybe you think I'm being a little overbearing 
with the 183 HP, maybe you find 181 to be just fine. Uh, well, then you can update the table that way too. Fully customizable table to fit your needs. I try to provide all the numbers for you in my deep dives, you know, so you can make your own conclusions as far as what's good for Lickitung here. As far as my recommendations are concerned, it's just to uh, help guide people along if they don't know any better themselves. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I think it is kind of like a personal thing when it comes to IVs, once you get very fluid with it. So what about attack breakpoints? What's going on with the attack weight for Lickitung? Uh, well, I gotta say, there are two extremely meta, very tantalizing attack breakpoints for Lickitung. And that is an attack breakpoint on Registeel and an attack breakpoint on Shadow Walrein. And what makes these attack breakpoints so like hard to recommend, what makes them like so goofy to me, is that uh, when it comes to Registeel and Shadow Walrein, like your opponents don't really, like nobody in this game really has control over their PvP IVs. Uh, you can trade to try to improve your Registeel, and you can do a bunch of rocket stops to maybe get a better Shadow Walrein to one day, you know, uh, frustration TM it, to wait until December so you can evolve it, you know, so... Upgrading your IVs or getting, you know, specific stats on these Pokemon can be pretty hard. When it comes to the highest level of bulk for these Pokemon, like rank 1 levels of these Pokemon, uh, chasing that, you know, defense stat, you know, raising your attack stat to meet that can be pretty unreasonable. Um, but when it comes to the lower ends of it or the more reasonable ends of it, even like the rank 1 Lickitung could possibly get it. For instance, the uh, highest defense raid caught Registeel, the 10-13-10, a rank 1 best buddy Lickitung could meet that attack breakpoint with a measly 96.92 attack stat. However, if you follow the recommended defense stats for my Registeel PvP IV Deep Dive, and a lot of people playing on, you know, the Play Pokemon Championship level do have Registeels with this quality of defense, uh, then you're going to require a 97.48 to 98.56 attack weight. Then when it comes to the Shadow Wall Rain, the variation in defense stats can be even more volatile because you only get so many shots at these rocket stops. And then it being a community day exclusive kind of thing on top of it uh, just makes it even goofier for people to, you know, upgrade their Shadow Wall Reigns if they already have one. Uh, so an attack range of 95.63 to 99.93 attack could meet that breakpoint. And these breakpoints are pretty nice for the Registeel, you potentiate the 2-2 shield scenario, and in general, you're gonna be licking it down even harder than usual. And then for Shadow Wall Rain, you get potential to overcome it in the 0-0 and 2-2 shield scenarios, and you could possibly beat it in the 1-1 shield scenario, straight body slam as well, should you get the attack breakpoint. But as much as you pump up your attack, until you get to the point where you're actually like sacrificing your defense to do so, um, you know, 100% consistency might not be there. Uh, so with all that said, my general recommendation is if you are interested in these attack breakpoints, um, I'd say 97.7 attack is a uh, kind of a good low end to kind of shoot for to maybe get these attack breakpoints. And if you are really, really interested in getting it, uh, then 98.23 I feel is a reasonable soft cap based on the potential stats of uh, Registeel and Shadow Wall Rain there. So overall, definitely not a huge priority, but if you're looking through your Lickitung options and you notice, hey, I got the defense and the HP and this one's got 97.7 attack. Well, then that one might be a little bit better than ones that have like slightly higher defense or HP or something like that in these two specific matchups, of course. And this attack weight can play into other things as well, like you are increasing your body slam and your power whip damage, and in the mirror matchup, you can get CMP as well. Although that mirror is just too goofy to track, really, but it's just some things to think about, right? If you want an idea of how difficult it is to get the attack weight, the defense weight, and the HP weight, uh, here's a table of the 29 options that are able to achieve this. This is also linked in Game Press as well for you to check out. And some of them do hit higher defense stats. Some of them do hit higher HP stats as well. Uh, the one that stands out to me the most on this list too is going to have to be the 10, 15, 14. This is actually the rank one raid caught Lickitung. So if Lickitung comes back into raids, I'd say this is uh, definitely the IV split you're going to be looking for. It's got the higher end of the defense stat, 126.58, 184 HP stat on top of it, and 98.27 attack. So this is like my dream Lickitung. Uh, but you know, shoot for the moon, land among the stars. It is just one IV spread. 
amongst, uh, you know, thousands of IV spreads here. Now, I imagine some of you have already built an XL Lickitung and you're checking out the stats and you're realizing that yours isn't quite up to snuff. Should you build a second Lickitung? Uh, well, personally, if it is too much of a chore for you to go through the hassle of getting all that XL candy again, um, I feel like 125.1 defense is uh, perfectly acceptable for a Lickitung that you've already built. And uh, about 181, maybe even 180 if you got that and you really don't want to build another Lickitung. Um, I think that HP stat would be fine too. And then any attack stat, of course. If you have those minimum checks, then I just kind of ride with the Lickitung you have unless you're looking at playing at like a higher championship level. Then, of course, start sweating bullets because it's going to be round two for XL Lickitung for you, right? Um, and yeah, I guess also if you don't have a premium Lickitung yet, and you've got somehow 400 plus XL candy of Lickitung on hand to begin with, and you really, really, really want to build a Lickitung, you're sick of waiting, um, then I think these stat recommendations, you know, can be acceptable to if you are just really impatient about building Lickitung there. But I will say if you are on the impatient side of the force, to make sure you've got like a pretty big meaty attack weight on it, just so you've got like an attack weighted Lickitung to do those specific jobs. And then in the future, when you get your big XL boy, then you'll have a more defensively weighted one. And in that way, they have, you know, unique roles. And who knows, in the future, uh, we might get some new Pokemon added to the game, and oh my gosh, having an attack weighted Lickitung all of a sudden matters or something like that, right? I will say, I was actually looking at Kofagrigus today um, because I was going to build one for the first time, and uh, in the initial deep dive for Kofagrigus, the attack weights didn't really matter all that much, uh, but I did find some pretty interesting attack weights on Kofagrigus. I may make a short little video talking about that sometime soon. Now, if your premium Lickitung IV option is a best buddy Lickitung, uh, that, that may just be what you have to go with because uh, I think over 70% of the Lickitung highlighted in my IV tables, um, over 71% of them are our best buddies, right? So you might be a little hard pressed to get a non best buddy, high quality Lickitung there. So it's up to you if you want to hold out for a non best buddy spread or not. But statistically, it's probably going to be the best buddy spread, right? Um, so that does take away your best buddy slot. I know in today's meta, the best buddy slot isn't as contested as it used to be in the past. And when I say the past, I mean like the non XL era. So it's up to you. Um, but using your best buddy slot on Lickitung does hamper your ability to bring out the full potential of Pokemon like uh, Pachirisu or, you know, um, Alolan Sandshrew and uh, Purified Wobbuffet, XL Chansey. So they're not exactly like big meta names there. Some of them can function really well in cups. It's just something that you have to be, you know, mindful of, a personal choice that you're making. Um, but if I had a high quality XL Lickitung and I had all the candy to build it and it happened to be a best buddy version, I probably wouldn't think twice about it at this point, especially seeing how like unlikely it is to get the non-best buddy version. At any rate, that's all I gotta say about Lickitung right now. If you got any questions on this content, of course, comment below, let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. And of course, if you wanna reference any of this information in a text-based format, you can check out my article on GamePress, link in the description, of course, having all this information, including the PvP IV tables, all set out for you in a text-based format. Of course, if you enjoy this kind of content, you wanna see more like it, maybe you wanna know what the good Obstagoon IVs are with that Obstagoon community day coming up. Well, maybe you should subscribe to Swag Tips, right? Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a special shout out to these Patreon supporters. If you want to support Swagman on Patreon, link in the description. I know I'm about a month late on uh, the hot marketing for the Tap 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 merchandise, uh, but what are you going to do, right? Um, but yeah, if you want some interesting Pokemon Go related merch, uh, link in the description to that. Really helps out the channel.